you can see these things in a park. Sometimes in the streets. And most often in the hands of shoppers. Plastic bags are virtually everywhere. These have become part of our everyday lives. But have you ever wondered how these things are made and where these come from? Approximately 1 trillion plastic bags are made every year. Majority of the people are quite surprised to learn the highly technical and complicated process of making a plastic bag. On the molecular level, plastic, the main component of plastic bag, is made of polymers which is long flexible chains of chemical compounds. This particular structure makes the plastic to become malleable and to be easily molded and shaped, especially under heat and pressure. To start the manufacturing of plastic bag, raw materials are obtained and extracted from the ground. Most of today's plastics are derived from fossil fuels. The crude oil and natural gas serve as the primary sources for it is a cheap alternative to plastic made from plants. After extracting the raw materials, the refined oil or cracked natural gas is then transmitted to a refinery where it is converted into several products, including the ethane from crude oil and propane from natural gas. The ethane and propane are then sent to a cracker plant to be cracked or broken into smaller molecules. From ethane, ethylene is produced, and propane produces propylene. Then, a catalyst is mixed. This catalyst links the molecules together and forms polymers called resins. This particular structure makes the plastic to become malleable and to be easily molded and shaped, especially under heat and pressure. The polymerization process turns ethylene into polyethylene and propylene turns into polypropylene. The resins that are produced are then melted, cooled down, and chopped up into pre-production plastic pellets. The amount of pressure and heat that are applied to manufactured resin pellets depends on the different densities. For instance, grocery bags are commonly made in high-density polyethylene, which has a higher tensile strength than plastic films made from low-density polyethylene or linear low-density polyethylene. The plastic bags that we usually use every day are made from linear polyethylene resins. And then, manufacturers combine the linear polyethylene with another low-density one in a mixer. The combined materials will be blended and turned into a homogeneous material. Then, it will undergo in a plastic film extrusion where the homogeneous material is heated and pressurized to create a consistent molten liquid. Once the liquid is created, the resin is forced into a circular dye. Then the hot resin is blown outward or upward to create a thin, long balloon of very pliable plastic film. The plastic bubble will gradually cool down as it further expands, and rollers then flatten out the plastic bubble and stretch it into very thin sheets which will be the bag walls. The final step of the process happens by pressing the two sheets together to create the sides of the bag. A 
and this is where additional customizations can be added, such as putting perforations or binding zipper strip. It is possible for the plastic to be wound and cut to the most suitable size and shape depending on the use or application for the bag. Plastic bags are used for holding and transporting goods such as food and sometimes waste. and it also can be used when packing for travel. But we must be responsible in consuming plastic bags. It takes about 500 years or more for a plastic bag to degrade in a landfill. It does not really break down completely, but instead photodegrade, which means that it becomes microplastics that absorb toxins and continue to pollute our environment. To prevent polluting the environment, recycling is encouraged to do. It is the action or process where waste are converted into reusable material. As if by magic, it is now ready to be reborn as something completely new.